This video is brought to you by Ugreen. Valve recently shipped the official Steam Deck dock, and I've got it right here. But back when Valve first announced the Steam Deck, they said essentially that all third-party USB-C docks would just work, and they do. And a lot of third-party manufacturers decided, hey, let's capitalize on this and make as many different docks as we can. So I figured I would make a video taking a look at all of our different options. Now, if you find one that speaks to you that you decide to buy, there are going to be links in the description down below that like button. And some of those will be affiliate links and some of them won't. If it's an affiliate link, I'll put a little emoji next to it so that you are fully aware that you are supporting the channel directly by using those links. Uh, but hey, pick up the one that you think fits your use case the best. All right, let's get started. Can I plug in my Steam Deck? You've got a Steam Deck? Yep, it came in yesterday. Me and the other Nerd Nest pets are gonna play some Deep Rock Galactic. Okay, man. Yeah, go right ahead and plug it in. What can I unplug? You don't have to unplug anything. I've got plenty of room on this charging station. Thanks, Bill. Rock and stone. Rock and stone. The Ugreen 100 watt GAN charging station can make your desktop easier. It's got seven power ports, including three USB-C ports, three AC ports, and a USB-A port. The first two USB-C ports can push up to 100 watts of power. That means you can charge your Steam Deck either by plugging it into USB-C, or you can use the official Steam Deck wall wart that came with your Steam Deck and just plug it right into either the back or the top of this charging station. With seven power ports, the 100 watt power strip can effectively organize your cluttered cables, save you some space and tidy up your desk. When I plugged my Steam Deck into it, it was roughly at 83% and it told me it was going to charge it in 22 minutes. Whether you have to plug in something like a TV, a fan, a lamp, a Steam Deck, an iPhone, an iPad, or a laptop, you don't have to go and find a place on the wall to plug in because you've got this sitting right on your desk. And what's even better is it's got a switch so you can just shut it off when you're done using it. If you wanna make your desktop easier, get 100 watts of extended power and plug in more devices in less spaces, then use the link down below in order to pick up your own Ugreen 100 watt charging station. Not only will you get an awesome device, you'll also be directly supporting the channel. In the interest of time, I'm gonna go through the pros and cons of each one of these docks pretty quickly. And then at the end, I'm gonna talk about who I think each one of these docks is for. Let's get started. All right, let's start with the official Steam Deck dock. I wanna start with uh, just the basic specs for it. It's got DisplayPort, it's got HDMI, it has USB-C pass-through, it has Ethernet gigabit, Ethernet gigabit? Anyway, and three USB 3.1 ports. It also gets firmware updates. It's made out of plastic and has a full rubber bottom, which I like a lot. And it comes with an extra power adapter in case you wanna be able to uh, take your power adapter with you, but leave one plugged into your dock all the time. It has DisplayPort, which gives it the ability to be a multi-screen system. Uh, and it also has FreeSync support, which is essentially like uh, I mean, just for simplicity's sake, it's essentially variable refresh rate. Let's move on to the cons. It's pretty expensive at $90. I mean, when you, when you pay for it, you are getting the dock and the charger, which is great, but some people don't want the charger. If you only have one TV and you only charge your dock or your, your deck when it's docked, then maybe having that extra charger is something that you don't wanna pay for. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, another disadvantage for this is that that, uh, that extra charger doesn't have a detachable cord. The most likely point of failure for any charger is the cord, and having a cord be non-detachable always drives me crazy. It's also completely incompatible with cases for two reasons. Number one, I've tried the kill switch case and I've tried the JSOX case, and the kill switch case, you can kind of balance it in that groove, but only kind of. A stiff breeze is gonna knock that thing over. But the shape of the cord here, uh, the shape of that cord does not fit through the kill switch case. So you're not gonna be able to charge the uh, Steam Deck without taking it out of the case anyway. In fact, I've got my son's uh, Steam Deck right here that has the JSOX case on it. And I'm gonna try, no, I, you can't charge this thing in a case. If you are using this, Steam Deck dock, the official one, 
you can't have a case. Well, you can't have a case, but you're going to have to take it off every time. And that's a huge hassle. I think that that's a big drawback there. All right, let's move on to JSOX. They keep coming out with them. And I only have this one, which is the very first one that they came out with. But they've got a whole slew of different docs that you can buy and I'm going to go through the features of each one even though I only have one of them because I'm going to assume that they all plug into a TV and plug into your Steam Deck equally well so we can talk about the features even if I don't have them in hand. Uh, this is the very first one that came out. It has HDMI, USB-C for charging, and two USB-A ports and it has Ethernet that comes out the side. Um, this one does not have a uh, gigabit ethernet though, and it doesn't have display port, uh, but it's really cheap and that's a good thing. It's made out of aluminum. I think that they're all, all the JSOX ones are made out of aluminum and it has a little rubber area where the steam deck actually comes into contact with it. So the metal doesn't scrape up your, uh, steam deck. Okay. Let's move on and talk about the next JSOX one. This one is pretty much the same as the the one that I have, and I, real quick, I'm gonna give you the numbers. This is, the one that I have is the HB0602, and then they have the HB0603. The differentiator between those is the 03 model has gigabit ethernet instead of regular ethernet, and it has an extra USB port on the back. But other than that, those things are pretty much the same. Then we move on to HB0702, the naming of, of electronics these days is just ridiculous. Again, pretty much the same as the previous one, but this one has DisplayPort. There are a lot of people that are very, very excited about DisplayPort. I'm not one of them. Not that I think that it's bad, I just don't care and I don't really need it. Let's move on because that's really the only differentiator between, between that one and the previous one is DisplayPort. This next one is absolutely the weirdest one, and that is HB0604. It trades a USB port for a built-in M.2 drive. This is so weird. Essentially, you've got a dock with a built-in storage, very, very fast storage, and JSOX is written like a script that will automatically mount that drive into your Linux part partition, that's not the right word, into your Linux file system so that you can access that when you've got it docked. I can see how people would really like that. For me personally, I don't want to have to think about where I've got the stuff installed when I go to play a game. If it's suddenly not on my drive because I've disconnected it from the dock, that's not something that I want to have to think about. So that's a no-go for me. That one's also pretty expensive. In fact, out of all the docks that we're talking about today, this one is the most expensive. But if you want to have that extra super fast storage, that's pretty compelling. Overall thoughts for pros and cons for all of the JSOX ones really quickly, because the only differentiator between them are the features that they have. The pros for all of them is the all metal body. Uh, then there's a con and there's a pro, but it's also a con. The pro is that they have so many different options for you. And I also look at that as a con because they keep coming out with more. It makes me kind of afraid to buy one because I never know what they're going to drop next. And I feel like I am I might miss out on something because they just launched something that, I don't know, does your dishes for you or something at the end of the day. Um, the one that I have, the which one is it here? This one doesn't really fit cases. I've heard of other YouTubers talking about that their JSOX doc fits cases. I only have this one. And so maybe some of the other ones have like a slightly wider front and the case can fit in there. But when I tried putting my Steam Deck in a case in this slot, it just barely balanced. However, even using the case, you can still plug this in, unlike the official Steam Deck dock, which has that weird triangular cutout, which prevents you from actually using it with a case on. This is definitely quibbling, but it drives me absolutely crazy when companies don't have all the wires going the same direction, so it can just go off the back of my desk. This one has the ethernet and all of the JSOX docks have the ethernet go off to the side. Not a big deal, but I personally 
can't stand it. And then lastly, it's awesome that it's all metal, but it has little tiny rubber feet. I wish the bottom was completely coated in rubber like the official Steam Deck dock is because I don't have to worry at all about this scraping or scratching anything. All right, let's take a look at the iVolar Steam Deck dock. It has gigabit ethernet, HDMI, USB-C power for pass-through, and three USB-A ports. Um, this is the only one that fit Project Kill Switch for me. None of the other ones have fit. However, the JSOX dock doesn't really fit in here. Like, it'll hold it up, but it's just kind of balancing, and it's off to the side a little for some reason. I don't know what that's all about. Um, it's definitely the biggest of all of them. It, ha it has an all-metal body, which I like, and the rubber feet are longer than the tiny rubber feet that are on the JSOX dock, but not quite as good as the full rubber bottom of the official dock. It also has a little light inside that lights up when you when it has power so you know whether or not plugging your Steam Deck into this is actually going to work. That's important because this does not come with a power cord just like the JSOX ones don't come with power cords. Now for JSOX, we've seen uh, firmware updates, but for iVolar, we have yet to see firmware updates. That doesn't mean that they won't do that, but it, so far, I haven't seen any up firmware updates from iVolar. That's not to say that others can't do it, but nobody's gonna be able to do it as easily as Valve and make it seamless for the end user. Who doesn't wanna deal with stuff like that? Okay, let's talk about who these are actually for now. I'm gonna start with the official Steam Deck dock. Um, this, I think, is for people who really like using first-party stuff. I think it's for people who don't want to have to worry about doing firmware updates later because the Steam Deck is going to take care of that for you. I think it's for people who don't want to have a case and it's for people who absolutely want to have that extra charger. I think that that's pretty compelling. Who is the JSOX dock for? That's really tough to answer. And I think the reason it's so tough to answer is because they have so many options. I think that pretty much anybody can find a JSOX dock that works for them. But of course, you can also find non-JSOX docks that work for you too. And then there's the iVolar Steam Deck dock. You know, it occurs to me as I say that for the 500th time, I, you know what? I'm sure that somebody out there has counted up the number of times that I've said Steam Deck dock in this video. Let us know in the comments down below. How many times did I say it? All right. How many times is, or not how many times, who is the iVolar Steam Deck dock for? Well, I think it's for people who have the kill switch case because this is the only one that really fits that from my experience. Uh, secondly, I think it's for people who don't need an extra charger. And I think it's for people who aren't really interested in using desktop mode. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below which dock you're gonna pick up and why you're gonna pick up that dock. If you're not gonna buy any of the docks, just leave your favorite emoji for the algorithm. And speaking of the algorithm, while you're down there, if you click on the like button, it would really, really help, help out. You made it this far in the video. You probably did enjoy it. I've got a couple more videos that you guys can check out right up here from the Nerd Nest. I'm Bill. Stay rad, everybody. Bye-bye.